Thank you. So today we want to have a discussion around uh, reverse proxy and uh, in particular Nginx. But I know in the past we've, we've been using um, Apache 2 proxy, but that is also um, another discussion. Um, I, I know Bob likes uh, Apache 2 uh, proxy more than Nginx. So my tools, the tools that we are using, the Ansible tools is, uh, I, I guess, preferring a use for its leaning toward um, in the next proxy rather than party to proxy. So we want to get deep and, and at least know uh, the structure, why we are using these proxies. Why don't we just um, access our Tomcat instances directly? Why should we have um, uh, have proxy in our, in our setup? Yes. So, so more generally, uh, what we normally have is um, a setup like this that you can see on this picture um, that we are accessing our, our infrastructure um, through a proxy. Um, and um, the proxy that we do run is um, either Apache 2 or Nginx. And on that proxy, we just open HTTP port 80 and 443. And then we block everything else on the on the firewall, firewall level, host firewall level. Of course, um, you could again block other stuff if you have a, a perimeter firewall running on a physical um, maybe firewall. But then um, we want to make sure that even our host, if, if you, you are on an environment where you don't have physical firewall, then your host should uh, at least filter traffic that it needs and, and drop everything else. So that is why on the on the proxy level, we want to only listen on port 80 and, and, and 443. Of course, um, the softwares that we are using do not really, you know, you, you can use, use them to serve uh, even static files. You can, if you have, like two, three, or four instances that you want um, load balancing, then you that can also be achieved. They are not necessarily um, specific to the proxy. You can use it. You can use them as web servers as well. For instance, um, Apache Two was, was designed as, as a general um, web server, but then you can do um, like reverse proxying and 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 load balancing as well. So this diagram notice that uh, we have a proxy and then we have other um, tools that you be having. And normally that would be a DHIS2 web application and you can have one or two instances. And then of course the database and, and the monitoring bit of, well, and, and in future, we will be including integration stuff also, amongst others. These are just this is just a standard install, but you can have even more uh, middlewares around. Uh, you know, after after the proxy instance that you will be running. So, why why don't we just um, access Tomcat directly? I mean. Uh, I know uh, you could run an, an, a single instance of Tomcat, and then you can you can um, have um, say up, up up one files, up two files, up three files. You know, as much as the number of the web applications that you want, and Tomcat will route request um, uh, to those instances. But that but that means you will run one single Tomcat instance. You know, and then on that single Tomcat instance, you, 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 the request will be forwarded to the, um, the web app, depending on what you append on your or, or face path of your URL. But the way we do set up our infrastructure, our, our application stack is that we want to segregate um, these applications so that they run in, in somewhat virtual environment or, or rather within containers. And in this container, 
in, in these containers, they, they have everything that they need. They have their own uh, separate Tomcat instances. And um, these separate Tomcat instances have all the dependencies and, um, and, and they listen even on port 8080. Uh, yeah, something like that. So if you are not use proxy, then what will happen if you have say two instances of um, instances of DHIS two? You'll have to worry how you will listen to a single subdomain, you know, and and forward to different application. And and if say you're using containers for, for instance. And how will you be routing a request that goes to application one? If you don't, something like that, it's, it's going to get more complicated. And that is one of the reasons why we do have a proxy response. I'm hearing background noise. Maybe, maybe you can mute some guys that are not talking, that are not supposed to talk. Yeah, I think it was Dajo. I just muted him. Okay. Uh, he's got too many lady friends nearby, I think. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. So with a, with a proxy in front of our setup, it and it's enabling us to match, you know, the the apps that we want to to match and then route those requests to the respective uh, applications that they uh, that will be serving those um, requests. So it gives us another advantage of uh, logging. Uh, we we can view the logs of the of the of the all the requests that we are receiving on our server uh, centrally on 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 a given uh, on on one single proxy. I mean the, the front end. Yes. So um, next is that whatever happens, whatever happens behind um, our reverse proxy is 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 not feasible to the, the the users that are accessing our infrastructure. Yeah, they they will be using uh, one subdomain, and then that subdomain routes traffic. Um, I mean, the proxy routes traffic to respective applications, and that that is infeasible to them. Um, there's another scenario where you, you might be having even two or three Tomcat instances. Uh, that's something that we, we are thinking even of supporting with our DHIS2 tools, uh, load balancing, so that you have uh, two, three, four Tomcat instances, all of them uh, run, run writing to a single database. And you know, uh, if you have um, a system that is very intense, on the on the on the logic uh, DHIS2 app, so 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 that you want to run uh, maybe two three instances, and you want to load balance uh, traffic back to those instances. So users would not even uh, realize that they have they are accessing instance one or, or 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 instance two or three. That is abstracted and 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 infeasible to them. So. It's because of the proxy that that is, I guess uh, we have that ability and, and even the load balancing bit of it, uh, that advantage is, is, is we are getting from, uh, with adding the proxy into our, our map here. So of course there are other things like security that, that, that are improved with using a, a proxy because uh, sometimes we have endpoints that maybe have a, a security uh, vulnerability and, 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 and we want to block those endpoints maybe before the solution is, uh, the actual solution is developed. So we can even with a, on, on the proxy level match the exact um, URI and block that endpoints, you know, something like that. And, and in most of our deployment, uh, we are using Let's Encrypt. Uh, most in most cases we don't have SSL certificates, uh, but we have subdomain mapped to the server's public IP address, and we have we are to to worry about um, TLS and, and SSL ourselves. So, with Let's Encrypt, uh, it implies that everything has to be automated. 
that um, the way your certificates are renewed is, is automatic. You, you don't need to worry about uh, certificate renewals in future. Normally the certificates that you get uh, with Let's Encrypt um, are maybe valid for a limited period of time, normally three months. And you want that to, to be seamless so that you don't have to come to your server and do a renewal yourself. So there are modules that are developed, um, open source modules that are developed that will enable that with uh, say in the next proxy or even Apache 2 proxy. Um, assume now that you're not using a proxy uh, somewhere here, that you want to access your old stuff, uh, your Tomcat stuff, your Munin. Uh, then you would you would have difficult time worrying about how you would handle this let's encrypt um, and automating this let's encrypt stuff. But if you have a proxy in front of your infrastructure, in front of your application stack, it's it's just a, a it's gonna be very easy for you. And and by default, the install script um, is is focusing on using uh, let's encrypt rather than you getting your own certificate. Of course, that is supported. Uh, or with a standard, uh, you can you can switch and use your own certificate. And then um, there is this geolocation where you want you, you might also there's a module that uh, at least on Nginx and I guess um, Apache Two also has that that you can limit users that access your system based on their geographical location. Yeah, uh, that is also maybe reducing attack service of um, you know those who are attempting to into your system. So you limit uh, uh, where you want the request to hit your, 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 your web server. So that is also possible on, on, on Apache 2 or Nginx proxy. You can say, I want all the requests that hits my server to come from this particular location and it will um, deny all the others, you know, all the others from other different locations. Yes. So the way Nginx configuration is structured is that they are, they are, they are done into um, contexts. We have main context, uh, which is the main configuration file. And then we have HTTP context or section and then stream and then events uh, section. Normally the section that we do tweak every, uh, every now and then is the, is the HTTP. Yeah, but then you have stream section also and events section. So the HTTP section is, is having other child um, context like server context and, and, and within server context, we have location context, you know? So it's, it's kind of a tree-like structure where you have the root and then within the root, you have the, um, the child and then the child of that child, yeah something like that in and and variables that are defined on http or the main section are inherited into the http into the um, and within the http section the variables and, and directives that you define there and in, are inherited into the um, the server section and so forth so uh, we are going to at least have a look on this section and how this configuration structure look like. And um, we can start with HTTP context because that is, that is normally where we are focusing on with what we are using mostly. And within that HTTP context, we have, um, we have server section. And on server section, we get to define these virtual hosts so that on, on the server section, you can have uh, different, uh, you can have one, two, or, or many um, server sections uh, within the, the HTTP context. Sometimes you might use one in the next um, proxy to serve uh, two, three, or four, or so many uh, virtual hosts. And these virtual hosts are not necessarily, you know, you could have one virtual host or subdomain focused for uh, maybe DHIS2 application stack and another one serving some other um, or matching some other application or serving some other application. So you are not restricted. You can have, uh, you can use this proxy to do so many other things and, and, 
that is uh, achieved with the server section. And then upstream, yeah. Well, as much as uh, we are talking about this proxy, it can do things that, um, one is that it can have static files and it can have it can even have it can it can even serve um, other dynamic sites like PHP and and, and even Python uh, sites. But majorly we are using it as a proxy. We are just receiving requests and then we are using it as um, as an interface where we route requests to various uh, backend applications. So for that to be possible, there is this section called upstream, you know upstream section um or rather it's actually location section location context context this matches the request that you have and then it pushes or it gets uh, it passes those requests to the application that you you want to access so so the server context uh http content http context has server context and server context is, it, it looks with uh, like this uh, code snippet that we see here, that you have HTTP context and then within it, we, you have server uh, context and, and within that server, the server context, we have um, a location context. So it looks like this um, code snippet that you see on the, on the right. Mm -hmm. So the location, is, is is going to be uh, within the the server context as you can see on this um on this um slide so we have the server up there and then maybe the the first server block that you have is uh 80, is, is is listening on http port 80 but then normally we don't uh want users to access uh, any content on http port 80 because it's insecure so, so every request that hits uh, port 80 is redirected to 443, which is um, is secure, um, which it which uh, adds TLS and SSL encryption on top of your of your implementation. So, within the server context, we have this location now, and and this is where routing happens to your backend applications. Okay, so let, let's check um, another thing that um, that proxy gives you is the logging. Uh, you can inspect your logs, get to know where your users are coming from, get to know their IP addresses, their public IP addresses. And if you have um, errors, you can check error logs, what uh, is the problem exactly. And these, uh, uh, you get this by default. If you just install your, your proxy, uh, you get to uh, the logging done into var log nginx um, directory. directory. And within nginx directory, that var log nginx directory, you have error logs and access logs. And that is where you, 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 you check when you are troubleshooting, maybe you have a problem, you get to dig into those logs and maybe locate where the problem is. So you have error logs and access logs. Of course, you, you can have uh, more, uh, you, can, you can tweak uh, your Nginx server context configuration so that your error logs and maybe server logs are, are redirected into a different file. You don't, this is the default, but then you can decide that for this particular subdomain or server context, I want to write to a different file. Yeah, so that if you have um, so many subdomains and you want to, really check uh, and, 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 and you want to focus on one, then you can even configure your logging so that for that context, you, you write to a separate file, not the default, because the default is gonna have as many contexts as you have in your, in your installation. Yeah, so after these quick uh, slides, we want to at least check uh, what we normally have in our on our standard install, and you know, and see how this is implemented. The same the same things that we are talking about right now. How are they, you know, implemented on our automated install? You know, so I will head back to the terminal and uh, and access one of the servers that we have DHIS two set up already. Yes.
Mm. Okay. I'm logged in already. This is the server I wanted to access, I think. Yeah. Yeah, this is the server I wanted to access. So I'm logged in already. So this server used um, the standard uh, DHIS2 tools uh, with Ansible and it spawned uh, a couple containers. And the two containers that we are seeing here, uh, the first two are, are, are running Tomcat. And then um, this is Muni monitoring and then Postgres and proxy. So we are focusing today on the proxy because this is where um, requests are normally hitting uh, whenever you access DHIS2 instance. Yeah, so for you to check this um, configs, you need to execute into this proxy container and then go to the standard DHIS, I mean, standard um, uh, directory where we normally have um, in the next configuration. Um, and, and normally when you run the tools, you might want sometimes to even tweak your Nginx configuration to suit to suit um, the installation or the requirements, more special requirements that you want. Yeah, sometimes you want to say anything that hits uh, like slash root is redirected to um, a landing page because normally the, the standard installs that we have right now do not have a landing page. We are just focusing on the DHIS2 like, like let, let me demonstrate this. Just open a web browser. Um, it is on dhs 2dhs So as you can see, this is a DHIS2 uh, instance. It's a web application and it has also a HIS. HMIS. So you can see DHIS and that HMIS. Yeah, and HMIS also is resol resolving to uh, the, the endpoints that it, which is a DHIS2 instance and also Muni and also uh, say DHIS uh, low root, low root endpoints. So the tools will set, uh, the application instances, the HIS2 instances, and the monitoring for the corresponding instances. But normally you want to come back and set passwords for these uh, tools. You don't want to, to leave them uh, open to the public. You want to come back and set uh, passwords to these, to these tools. And we demonstrated before how you can set passwords for Munin, uh, for, for Gnorut, it's pretty straightforward. You can even add another user you can come to administration and add another user, add new user, give it as, um, let it be administrator and delete the default um, anonymous user that comes with the installation. That, that is pretty straightforward. But for, for uh, Gnorud, we demonstrated last time how you can do that. So what happens when I access root? You see, we are getting an empty response. So sometimes this, this is scary. You might, you might think that uh, the install is not working, but then this is something that the tools is, is doing. Is doing. It's, it's just matching the root um, it's folder like that. And then it, it, because it's not matching any of the applications that it's deployed here, it returns an empty response, which is normally 444. But sometimes you might have a landing page and you want to edit your proxy configurations so that you, you redirect all the requests that goes to root into a landing page. Or even you could decide that anything that goes to root is redirected into the prod instance of your DHIS2. Yeah, so that means you need to understand the configuration syntax of, um, of the proxy, where, where are you going to touch, where are you? Yes, things like those ones. And all of them are within this container, proxy container. And for you to be into that container, you can execute into it, exec, proxy, bash. So this is a bash prompt and we are sitting in this container. And now, if you just check which ports are listening here, you can use SS. 
you see we have port 80, we have port 443, we have port 8443. I added these for demonstration for purposes. But then that normally on, on, on a standard install, we have port 80 and, um, and, 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 and 443. That is for HTTP and HTTPS. And of course, um, 4949, if we want to enable Muni monitoring, at least for this container. Yeah, and of course, much more, uh, not everything here are accessible from the internet. You can check, uh, I mean, not all these openings, port openings are accessible from internet. They are also restricted on the firewall level. You, UW status will show us that. As you can see, we don't want everything to be accessible on the internet. Um, we want 80 and 443 and for Munin, we want it to be from the, um, the monitoring instance. You can see here, monitoring is port uh, 2.30. The IP address for the monitoring container is 2.30. And you are only opening access from that instance. And this, one's, uh, this one I added for the demo demonstration purposes. And of course, it's IP fashion 4 and fashion 6, as you can see. It support I, if you if you have IP fashion 6, then this these are the rules that corresponds to that. So normally, uh, uh, standard install for um, for the proxy, Nginx proxy gets the configuration files into each C Nginx. This is where uh, you normally have configuration files, you see. And the main configuration file is normally nginx.conf. This is the main configuration file, okay? So I have, I have added another context that is the stream, as you can see here, this is the stream, the stream context. And the default context that you get by, by just installing the next is the events and HTTP. And of course, this, these two contexts, which is events and HTTP are, uh, are actually on the root, they are, the, they are on the main context, which is uh, where you define other things like user. You see user here is, is not specific to a particular HTTP context or a particular uh, context. It's just, uh, it belongs to all uh, Nginx setup here and even the worker process. So the worker process here is set to auto and normally it, it takes the number of the of the CPU cores that you have on your on your installed environment. So that if you have maybe four CPU cores, the number of worker processes that are spawned are four. You can maybe you can check if the this LS CPU, how many CPU cores do we have here? We have uh, six CPU cores. No, no, how many, how many? Uh, CPU family, turn it, check it. Mm -hmm. And how many in the next um, worker processor do we have? BS aux grab in, in the next. Mm -hmm. We have only one worker processors because I think we have one CPU core here. We have one CPU core. So if you, if we had two CPU cores, then in the next uh, worker processors would be four. I, I guess I have another install of in the next somewhere. Uh, LXC list. Uh, let's get to this instance and check how many CPU cores do we have. Less CPU. Uh, we have four CPU cores, as you can see here. And how many in the next worker processes do we have? Yes, out. Grab in the next. Yes, as you can see, we have four worker processes. And these worker processes are being run by WW data uh, user. Of course, the master process is being run as root. It is the ma. It is uh, uh, these other other worker processes are, are spawned uh, by the master process here. It, it creates these worker processes, which are 
running as WW data user. And uh, WW data user is actually, a, a, it's something that you have more control. You can decide which user that you want your Nginx to be running with. And uh, you notice with Nginx conf, you can choose the first directive there. You can choose the user that you want your Nginx to be running with. Yeah, so Nginx allows you to include other configurations. It allows you to include other configuration files. Uh, by specifying where they are, uh, they are located. And you can use relative path or uh, absolute path. As you can see here, they have used absolute uh, path. And, and, and whereas this is, we can see this, we can as well use, um, we can as well, you can as well use, um, up, uh, sorry, a relative path. To accomplish that, and you can see you can see that in in, in just a few uh, how um, or where uh, the relative path was used. So this main configuration file is loading is loading other configuration files here, and we don't know we don't know what are those what what context are are those configuration files having, and we can on this call explore. So. The standard, the standard, uh, the tools that we normally use to set up our DHS2 uh, are pushing its configure is pushing its configure configurations into conf, conf a D directory, but then you can have them on sites uh, sites available and then create a symbling symbling to sites enabled. That is that is up to you, but but that is the preferred way of doing things. Uh, because maybe your configurations are having errors and you want to test them uh, thorough before you, you, you effect your configurations. And it would be, be better if you have, if you just have to create a symbling so that if there is a problem, you just delete that symbling and whatever it's running would, um, would just not be affected. So the config file, files that are loaded are within a conf B directory. As you can see, we have now uh, this, this configuration file. This is loaded at least with, um, with this, um, with this it, 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 it's actually included with this directive here, include directive. It's including everything that ends with .conf, um, .conf within um, conf D directory. This is the directory that we, we are sitting on right now, as you can see. And there are files here. This is ending with .conf. So it means this is gonna be, it's going to be loaded whenever your Nginx is reinitiated or whenever your Nginx is reloaded, whatever is in this file will be loaded as well. But what, what do we have here? Let's check. As you can see, we have server directives. We have server contexts. And these server contexts are two. It's not just one. We have this context here up to this, you know, the context is normally open with, with um, curly brace and closed with another curly brace. So this is the first server context. And the next one is this, is this block, is this uh, block of, of context, as you can see. So this is the next one. So why do we have two contexts? Why do we have two server contexts within this file? So the first one is listening on port 80. It's listening on um, HTTP port 80, uh, but it does, it, does, it does just receive everything that gets to port 80 and it returns or permanent redirects. It redirects everything that you have to uh, HTTPS, as you can see, as you can see here. So that if I even open an incognito window here, and access dhis2.com um, HMIS, even though I want to say, I want to access, you know, add code to HTTP like that. It's redirected back to, you know, HTTPS. So that happens on the, on the, on the proxy level. And that, that is what this server block is doing. It's receiving everything on port 80 and it forces it back to HTTPS port. Uh, 443. Of course, if you didn't have this next block here, 
this page would, would not have loaded. So it is just returning HTTPS, uh, it's returning everything, you're redirecting everything to HTTPS uh, 443. And if that, when, when that happened, this block captures that. So when it redirects everything to HTTPS 443, this is the next block that captures that. And then on this block, so many things happen. It is not just uh, it is not just um, listening on 443 and 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 you know it it enforces it enforces SSL um, encryption, TLS encry encryption, and it matches you know it matches your server name. Of course, even on the HTTP block, your server name is matched. So in the next by default, um, I mean the server block is 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 HTTP. This block is. Is a child of a Zaba, uh, is a child of HTTP block. So that means your Nginx proxy is working on layer seven of the OSI model. It's matching even the HTTP headers, post headers, and that is that is why it's even having ability to match, you know, DHIS2, yeah, this this domain. You could have another domain. You could have uh, uh, DHIS2.example.com. And you want that to be doing something else. So Nginx or any other proxy has that ability to match uh, those proxies so that you can serve so many applications within single, single proxy. Uh, it matches also this server name and then it returns, returns to HTTPS. And then on HTTPS block now, it's, it, it's enforcing um, encryption with TLS, of course you can see, you can either use um, this um, this directive here, like listen on 443 and enforce SSL. Otherwise, if you don't want to do that, normally you can say listen on 443 and then SSL, I think SSL on, something like that. Yeah, if you don't want to put it on the, on the same line, you can do something like this. And um, after that, well, server name is there, of course. Uh, you want to specify where you have your, your, your SSL certificate and key, because if you enforce uh, TLS on this server block, then it needs it to try to read your SSL certificate directive. If you didn't have these two directives here, you will get errors. Your Nginx will not even come up. And we can, you can, you can test that. Let's just comment uh, this line. and say Nginx minus T. And as you can see, we have errors. If we try to restart this um, proxy right here, it will not come up. And that is why normally you are advised when you apply new configuration, when you have changes to your configurations, don't rush to restart. You should reload and, and see what happens with the reload because with the reload, it keeps already existing connections. It keeps Nginx as, as it is, and it tries to apply your configurations while keeping the already existing um, connections. What if, but when, when you restart, it stops Nginx, and then it tries to start with the, with the, with the configuration changes that you, that you have applied. But then if they are wrong, if we, they have syntax errors, then you, you'll have your proxy going down. And if you have other sites that are, are being served, it's going to be a problem. So you are normally being advised to reload instead of uh, restarting. And as you can see here, we have errors because we just commented a line on this uh, block. We just commented um, SSL certificate block. So that implies that the SSL directive there implies that you should have your certificate somewhere. And this is even uh, generated with let encrypt as you can see. Yeah, this is another advantage of using using um, proxy uh, because if you are hitting our Tomcat instance, how how are we, are we going to deal with this um, tier uh, less encrypt stuff? Yeah, and then another line that you can see here. Let me just put line numbers so that it can be easy to demonstrate. Line number sixteen here. Um, you define the protocols that you want to support. Yeah. There, there, there are so many, there are other protocols that are filtered out here, like um, like SSL, uh, SSL, 
SSL uh, version three, for instance, uh, uh, TLS version 1.0 and 1.1, but we are dropping those uh, uh, protocols because there are known vulnerabilities to them that, you know, and that it's encouraged that you, you support uh, more recent uh, TLS protocols, which is TLS 1.2 and 1.3. Uh, and, and there is cyber suit down here, line number 34, as you can see here also. Yeah, the, the one that we support on our startup install is a bit, uh, is quite strict. And if you have um, all the browsers, you know, maybe you have uh, old server, uh, clients that support um, only all the protocols, then you, you're going to run into some problems. You, you will be locked out. Or if you have other um, old clients, like old Android um, devices, if, if this is very strict as it is right now, then those um, clients would have trouble connecting to this, um, to this uh, DHIS2 install. Yeah, so yes. And then, um, most of the things that you see here, like from line number 14 to line number 20 are just relating to SSL, SSL and TLS encryption. And then now other in the next directives that we, we do um, support for particular purposes, for particular um, reasons you know, like keep a live timeout and, and other stuff. So these are other in the next directive that we could even uh, spend days talking about, but then they are, they are very well documented on um, normally on the next um, site, like here. If you go to this site, all these um, configuration directives are documented. You can click each and every one and see what they are doing, uh, why are they there, what are the defaults normally, you know, like this one, the default normally is where, you know, it's thoroughly documented. And you can, you can, um, whenever you have doubts about a, a certain configuration, then you can go and check what it does. You know, there are so many and each and every them, if every one of them is documented. You can just copy something like this client maximum body size and try searching here. This is Nginx HTTP proxy, uh, but then you can go back and see what we have on that endpoint. So Nginx HTTP core module. So this all uh, configuration flag, flags that, uh, this is just documentation. You can even get to the upstream module and see all the directives that you have on the, on the upstream um configurations you can get to keep alive and check all the things that you can you can tweak and and even learn what they are what really happens with those uh configuration uh flags yes so it's thoroughly documented as i mentioned so but things that we have here are improving performance for our install but then on this file you don't see you don't see location configuration you don't see routing to various applications because they are included with, within uh, these files here, as you can see. They're just uh, lo location configurations are sourced from another file uh, or, or, or directory, as you can see. And notice that here, it, 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 relative path is used. That means your, your conf D should be within somewhere here on upstream. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, upstream is here. Yeah, LS upstream, we have now specific location configurations. We can even check what we have on uh, upstream glow root, you see. So this is the glow root. And since we have two instances, we will be having two uh, glow root instances. We have one for HMIS glow root and another one for BHIS uh, glow root. So uh, Nginx will, will match um, this endpoint slash H H uh, DHIS glow root and uh, or or even um, HMIS glow root and then it will forward your requests to the to the to the right to the right glow root install yeah so this this is why it's very important for us to run proxy 
if, we, if, if you didn't have this uh, in place, then that means we would we would figure out how how we will listen on port 4000 uh, to the outside world. We would have to figure out how we will expose port 4000, not even just one port, I mean, because we have two global instances here. They are both listening on port 4000. How would we, you know, expose this to the outside world? Because they are now listening on the same port, at least within those containers. So we would, uh, we would expose two different ports to, for us to be able to access to uh, this to uh, global instances. The same with um, with um, with the DHIS or the instance DHIS2.com. We would have to figure out how to expose this 8080 for HMIS and 8080 for DHIS2, you know. But this is simplifying things for us. Um, the, the proxy is simplifying things for us that we don't need to worry about that. Nginx is, is, or, or Apache 2 will just route request based on what it will be matching here. So this is how the, the requests are being matched. Yeah, uh, initially, um, when I, I demonstrated that when you eat the root uh, domain here, where when you don't specify the app that you want to access, you get an empty response. Why is that? It's because of uh, these, uh, these very last um, configuration, it's even this one, that if everything is, you know, after including the location configuration and you are not matching anything on route, then return 444. It's gonna return 444 so that you get to see this empty uh, response here. Yeah, that is the reason. But normally you would, you, maybe you have um, an empty, maybe you have um, a, a landing page uh, so that you want to hit, um, to that landing page and, and users should click uh, just HMIS to be redirected to HMIS endpoints or app DHIS so that they can get access to the DHIS application and, and monitoring so that they can get to the, to the Muni um, instance. So, so that you want, you want that nice page that gives users ability to just be clicking where they want to get to. So, you can have uh, you can implement that on this on this endpoint on this location block, so that you say location root, and then you put root uh, where you have your um, your site here. You know, you can say it's in um, var www. You know, directory mm -hmm, where you have in index index files in that directory and, and your static file in that directory. Yeah, something like that. And, and, and that is gonna, it's, it's going to serve your static files. Yeah, sometimes you, you, would, you can decide that um, I don't have a landing page, but I want users uh, to be redirected. I want users to be redirected to the DHIS instance. Maybe that is the production and um, the production instance. I want users to be redirected to DHIS instance whenever they don't specify where, where they want to go to. So you can just uncomment this and um, rename that into your DHIS instance. And that means the default or, or those who are accessing root um, location will be redirected or rewritten. The, their request will be rewritten into the DHIS endpoint. Uh, and after changing your configurations, normally you want to check if it's having any syntax errors like that. Into next, minus T. And of course there is, there is an error. So if I had just rushed and restart this, it will um, stop our, uh, our, our Nginx and it will not start. And then if we have other application being served here, we will land into problem. But the problem here is that we are not close, we didn't close this directive. Normally you have to close that with a semicolon. And again, we have this error, the certificate is defined. Mm -hmm. So we should check. And you can even see, it shows you which, which line number is that problem you, you have in that problem. So you can get edit again. Uh, and set number, it said number eight, something, somewhere there. So 
it's somewhere here. This we commented last time and we didn't uncomment. So you need to ensure that your SSL certificate path is, is defined and then test your configuration once more. Sorry. And it's passing. Of course, you can use a uh, uh, long, long format of this service in the next sit config test. Or test config in the next config. Yeah, yeah type on in the next, okay. Config test. So this should show you, it's gonna show you that the, the configurations are okay. This is the long, long, long format of uh, Nginx minus T. Yeah, and if the, your configurations are failing, we can make it fail. We use the long format. By just comment, commenting this, you will use long and see it's it's failing, yeah. So before you do anything, before you reload your engine, next configuration, before you do anything, you need to test your, your, your configuration and make sure that there are no syntax errors or any other errors. Right now, you know, can, can I make a small, just a small point there? Um, yeah. People often ask the difference between doing a restart and a reload, yeah? And they uh -huh. make a change on the Nginx configuration or even on their Apache configuration. If you do a restart, it will stop the proxy, and then it's going to try to load the new configuration. And if there's an error, then it won't restart. It won't start, yeah? So you're going to end up with downtime. So it's, in fact, it's always safer to reload rather than restart. Because if you reload, uh, it will test, and if if the new configuration won't load, then... I think the the nginx should continue to run. Maybe you can test that quickly now. If you make an yeah. error and do yeah. a reload, exactly. It, Let's demonstrate that. Should, um, uh, it's just a useful thing for people to be aware of. Yeah. So if we edit these and introduce a syntax uh, or just an error, maybe let's make it a syntax error by removing that closing directive. And then we write that, and then system. Just test first. Uh, it's gonna fail. Yeah, this... it's failing. And we say yeah. system restart in the next. So it has. If you check right now. Nothing is, is gonna be listening on port 80, as you can see. Nothing is listening on 8443. And I, if I try accessing this endpoint, this side here, it's no longer accessible. Because as Bob mentioned, your Nginx instance um, was stopped and then tried to apply the configurations that you have, got the syntax error, and then it failed to come up. So what if you had other sites that you were serving? Remember, it, it's not only, Maybe you, this was not the only site that you are serving with this on, on this proxy. So that will render all the other sites inaccessible. But then let's demonstrate using reload instead uh, by editing oh, you have the question. Maybe you can comment on that before we, we proceed, Bob. No, no, no. I just thought you were going to do the reload first because <laughs> you have to fix it before you can. Yeah. yeah. So with the reload, if we have an error like this. Let's just uh, restart in the next quickly. Uh, we have um, the site. The site now should be should be accessible. Yes, and let's again introduce that uh, syntax error. And then instead of restarting, we reload. Yes, there is, there is, there is, there are errors here. But is our site still accessible? Yes. Well, the moral of the story is always reload. Yeah. You know, only, so only, only restart mm -hmm. uh, if the if the reload is doesn't work. Mm -hmm. but, so, but use use restart very cautiously because you can end up with your site being down because of an error. The other thing, of course, as you say, just run run the engine X minus T. 
so that it verifies your configurations before you attempt or you move, you go forward with the reload and, and restart. But then so for the, the, just Apple, a mm -hmm. uh, just uh, now if you do a reload, mm -hmm. uh, will the new configuration include the other, uh, the, other, the other errors or it will just be ignored and continue with what was running? No, it will continue with the old one, Stephen. It will try to load the new one. Um, okay. But if, it, but if it fails, it'll just carry on with the old one. Okay. It just carry on with the, with the old ones. I'm sure it's a bit like a bit like Postgres, like Sam says. There's there's probably some Nginx options that require a restart. You know, like if you change the server port, maybe and things like that. Exactly. But I think I think for most options, the reload will do you. Mm -hmm. 90 percent yeah okay so yes yeah. so most of the things that we we've talked about here is in the next or this proxy working on on layer seven where it matches the server host names and routes request based on that and stuff but then you can use it you can use it you can it can also work on on layer four so that you you might be you might have ability of just listening on certain ports uh, or even SSH, maybe your firewall is opening, um, your firewall is opening, uh, say, port, um, or you can even redirect anything that goes to port 80 to SSH port if you want. That is purely on layer four. It doesn't inspect uh, your HTTP headers, but it's just uh, receiving requests on port, uh, whatever ports that you, you expose, and then it redirects everything to, uh, yeah. And, and that is actually stream stream configurations. Let's go back to main nginx configuration here. As you can you can see, this is the the stream configuration. That here um, I want to listen on port eight four four three, and then pass whatever I'm receiving to the local host uh, port twenty two. Yeah, something like this one. Something like this one. So uh, no, sometimes you might. Um, Right, right now we we are implementing this not on the on the nginx level but on on ip tables as you can see so before rules here uh, bring this password Tito, i'm sorry i'm gonna have to leave you but you guys please carry on um it's a shame we don't have more time because then I could explain to you all the reasons why Apache is better than Nginx. But <laughs> we 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 talk about uh, the other features being available on Nginx um, Plus. You know everything that you want is is you told that upgrade to Plus. That is that is a downtime for Nginx. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, thanks. I, I'm going to leave you at it, but um, you guys, please carry on. Okay. So Maybe yeah, bye. Something that I want to talk about here is 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 the um, is is Nginx working on layer four, but then you can achieve that like we have done here. Um, in this case, anything that hits port eighty is redirected to our container, which is the proxy really port 80 and anything that hits 443 is redirected to our container port 443 as you can see so lxc list shows that uh, the container that we are redirecting our request to is this 2.2 .2. as you can see with this it's actually 2.2 .2. and then that means this is actually implemented on the on the on the IP tables, net filter mo, uh, kernel modules of, uh, of Linux, but then you can you can achieve the same on Nginx by leveraging on um, the stream the stream context. Yes, I think we, we actually on top of the how uh, and we can summarize and maybe take a few questions. Yes. Yeah, so I'm, I'm still here. Um, I see Sam had asked, he'd love to hear those. Um, 
What are we talking about? Are we talking about the Angel X versus Apache thing? Yeah, yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, I, I think most of the limitation, Nginx works really great for, for simple use, like the way most of us are using it. But, I mean, for example, if you want to get into doing load balancing, right? A lot of people are enthusiastic about running a cluster of Tomcats with a Redis. Um, and then they have to consider you configure your proxy, uh, your reverse proxy to deal with the, the upstream. Uh, Nginx has some some important features for doing health checks on the back end, right? So you know, let's say you've got four Tomcats and you want to know if if one of the four is in trouble, if it's down, you need to do a health check on it to know, you know, is this one ready to send requests to? Uh, there is an option on Nginx to do that. I think I can paste it in here. Um, It's an option to do that, but when you read the documentation for it, you'll see that that option is on yeah. the on the uh, commercial one anyway. Because you can do it, of course, on Apache for free. Uh, there's a few things. So as a engine X for for basic scenarios, like how we mostly use it, is fine. Um, increasingly, you know, things like load balancing, the free version has some limitations. Um, there's some other things as well. I, I think that the the status, the default status page you get with Apache gives you more information. I think the status page on Nginx is a little bit limited. Again, there might be more that you get when you um, use a commercial version. I'm not sure. What, what so. And about that, Bob, I, I can also, yeah, we, we've had in the past um, uh, a setup where we were using Nginx as a reverse proxy. And then on, on the back end, um, we had uh, Windows, Windows um, Power BI so that we wanted to get all the requests that gets to, I mean, to the Nginx proxy and some subdomain proxy pass to that um, Power BI server. So, uh, the Windows Server normally supports uh, other encryption um, or, or other um, authentication protocols like NTLM, BASIC, you know, yeah. So we wanted to really enforce um, um, only NTLM authentication and not BASIC. And we, we realized that uh, open source in Nginx is, is not, is not uh, geared or it's not supporting NTLM authentication. And mm. uh, with that same feature is prof provided with the uh, NT and um, as Nginx Plus, and uh, which is very expensive. Nginx Plus is very expensive, and we ended up using other proxy uh, protocol, that proxy software, that is HA proxy, because it was it had that ability to proxy pass uh, NTLM authenticated requests. So that is when I realized. Yeah. So I, I think yeah, you're getting into more complex um, scenarios, you might find that you're gonna hit limitations with at least the free version of Nginx. I mean, mm -hmm. having said that, I mean, it, it's, it performs very well, you know, it's a very, it's a very solid web proxy. It's hugely popular, I know that. It's only old people like me, dinosaurs who still stick mm -hmm. with. I, I guess the, 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 the where Nginx is shining is the way it handles, the, the way it manages the, man, manages the resource, the memory. Uh, your Apache 2 is going, is going to need more, much more memory to handle more connections than Nginx. I think that is where Nginx is. That's, 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 that's a myth that you find on the internet. Mm. Um, it's usually, usually by written, written by people who are trying to favor Nginx. Uh, there are... <laughs> There are situations where Apache 2 can use a lot of memory. I mean, if you load lots of modules like PHP and you know, Apache, you've got many, many modules. Um, and then you fork many, many Apache 2 workers, you know, separate processes. It's going to use a lot of memory. But if you're using the, the more modern Apache 2 MPM module, and you're not, you don't have lots of modules loaded, um, this is actually very efficient. It has limits built into it, which are a bit more stricter. 
than nginx so i mean just like with postgres you know postgres has got this this section for configuring the maximum number of connections right um, everybody knows the maximum connections now by, by default the maximum connection is quite low i don't know what i can't remember what it is but it's like you know people use postgres and they they find they can only handle a certain number of connections then they complain and say, well, Postgres is only limited to a certain number of connections. It means it hasn't been configured. And the same is true to a certain extent with Apache. Yeah? By, by, by default, it'll throttle uh, the number of connections it'll allow in the front end. And this is to prevent it from saturating stuff at the back. Um, mm -hmm. but, but all of that can be, can be retuned. The problem is that the syntax of tuning on Apache is a little bit archaic i guess now the engine x configuration is much more modern looking people kind of understand it a bit better i think um, but i don't think it's as powerful the, the only thing that i find more powerful on engine x than is on apache um, is the the uh oh what do they call it um yeah rate limiting Nginx got a rate limiting module, which is a bit better than the Apache rate limiting module, I think. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's like a religious war. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, think I don't know. I, I, I've been supporting this Apache thing now for a long time, but I, I was considering even this week thinking, oh, I should just let it go. Um, and <laughs> just just let you carry on and promote nginx but then i realized even with this load balancing thing in fact you can't do it because if you want to do load balancing properly you yeah. need to be able to do this health check thing and if you can't yeah. do the health check you've got a, a very not very well functioning load balancer uh -huh. so that, that that means your apache 2 apache 2 doesn't doesn't support that by default, I'll no, it does. It. it does. Mm. You see that. Yeah. You see that. The other. You see the other link I got in there. Mod proxy health check. Mm -hmm. oh. It is there. Yeah. Oh. For free, open open source. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the work continues. <laughs> yeah. So, so that is the difference. Nginx got a lot of nice features, but some of them are some of them you have to pay for. Yeah, that's the yeah. difference. Yeah, and uh, I think we tried to to set up um, load balancing one time for for Uganda using Nginx, but we reached some somewhere where we needed a, a feature that uh, it supports, but then requires the paid version, especially around uh, allocating uh, the each request that come allocating to the to to, to the less busy uh, server mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we ended up, so if it, it allocated me two weeks ago, an IP address that it should be, each time I go, it will keep giving me that IP address, regardless of the, of how, 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 how loaded uh, that server is. The other expectation is that it would actually look at all the available servers and then give me another IP address to, to route me to that server or something. So that's kind of a weakness, uh, or maybe they did it intentionally until you paid that version of Nginx. I'm not sure okay. if uh, there, there is a directive that the other direct, I mean, I mean, dot balancing and and meaning dot balancing um, algorithms that you you want to to choose by by default it, it's normally using round robin, but then there is IP cache where where it, yeah. it tries yeah, but even the round robin was not working as expected, uh, and I think that feature specifically was for the paid version that it oh. can actually. Yeah. So, but then you something in the way you need to enable list connection. I mean, the, you add that directive explicitly on the on the upstream config configuration. Otherwise, if you don't you don't add um, the upstream the the, the list connection uh, directive, then that is not going to be used. I don't know if I don't know how your config configuration looked like because that is something that you need to enable. Otherwise, by default, it's not enabled. Stephen, did you try and do it with Apache? Or did you just give up at that point? I don't, um, we haven't, uh, because I think we had a lot of ideas behind, 
but uh, mm. somehow uh, it requires some bit of resources here and there. I think the minister yeah. will even coming to a position of procuring one load balancers, and then we try again to have oh. it uh, fully set up and, and all those kind of things. Yeah, but also I just wanted, we had a scenario one time oh. uh, when we had an instance that was set up using Nginx and at some point it could not withstand the request and, 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 and response and, uh, enough, not until when we had to switch to Apache and then it was working perfectly well. Maybe, I don't know, maybe we had left us some, but we, we verified the configurations were like all previously, you know, you're looking, this one is this, the values, the values are the same, uh, but somehow, somewhere, it wasn't working. Uh, I don't know what could have caused that or something. Maybe it's performance of um, uh, config tuning that we didn't do right. But then when we compared all the values for both Apache and uh, the, that Nginx uh, configuration, uh, most of the things were like taken care of as expected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Stephen, it's a difficult one because it's, yeah. a, it's a lot of work kind of trying to maintain configurations for two different proxies is what we're doing at the moment. Um, but I'm still I'm reluctant to abandon the Apache one because there are just some cases where it seems to be better. Um, I know, we, it'll be a good, good discussion point to have in Kigali. Mm. But I think we discuss it every time anyway. We haven't reached a conclusion in 10 years. Yeah. How much does it cost? Is the other, I mean, the other thing, of course, Stephen, is this ministry can just buy the commercial engine X. Around, it's around 6,000 to, I think, a month or something. It's a bit expensive. Oh, um, it's a, it's yeah. really expensive. I was even surprised. By the cost quite expensive, the... yeah. No, well, then, then you then you just need to bite the bullet and learn the Apache configuration. But uh, yeah, but I think they wanted to get the physical load balance or something. I don't know. Yeah, that's the other solution. But then, then you're paying for that as well. But, but yeah. that's the other solution. Mm. That there's a lot of myths that you read out there on the internet about how 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 poorly performing Apache 2 is, but it's mostly, it's mostly written by people who really don't understand Apache 2. Um, <laughs> oh. I know, yeah, we've had the same same feeling. I remember Bob when we were in the other TOT, and uh, I think that all the members were pretty much more used to uh, Nginx, not yeah. until we we try to come out with this Apache and most of now the installation since we bundled with the, and we and, and actually we came out with that version of Nginx support from on the DHS tool because of that, those discussions. Yeah, Tuzo and yeah. Tuzo was, yeah, I remember because Tuzo broke my tools in the process. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But unintentionally, yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I think, and I think the fact is that, that there are people who are going to work, want to work with Nginx because they're familiar with it. I just think that we need to be just honest and straightforward and say, look, if it's good that you should be working with tools that you're familiar with, but you need to be aware that there are some limitations. Um, and especially if you want to get into this load balancing business. I think there are some others as well, but that's the one I'm familiar with. Ah, Tito, sorry, I interrupted your beautiful presentation with my religious wall. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Gets even more interesting with the with the discussions like those ones. Yeah, so, I mean, the, yeah. The, the, yeah, there's a few things we want to talk about that Nginx configuration as well, because the other thing with my Apache 2 configuration is that I, I spent about a week studying mm. the, the CIS benchmarks, right, of all of the all of the kind of security considerations to mm -hmm. put into the configuration. Um, and I'm not sure you've done the same, you've done the same homework Definitely. yet with the, with the Nginx configuration. Because 
from the security perspective, it doesn't look quite as strong as the Apache yeah. one that you'll find. But that's not to say that you can't make it secure. I'm not arguing Nginx is not is not as secure. It is, but it, a little bit of work still needs to be done on that. Yeah, exactly. I agree. Um, those standard, um, the, the configuration flags that I have there needs to be checked against the recommended CIS, you know. Mm. Yeah, yeah Sam, uh, Sam, wa Sam wants me to do an Apache 2 session. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not, I'd love to do that. So I'm not sure I'm going to get time to do it in the next two weeks because I think then after that is the academy. Maybe after. I, I, I promise you I will do one, but probably not in the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so maybe we should even go ahead and talk about Postgres uh, tuning next week. A few stuff here and there. What do you think, guys? Or is there more to talk about with proxy still? Um, ah, well, you've done gone through quite a lot. It's a very good background. But I think a lot of people on this call are quite familiar with proxy configuration. But for the academy, it will be very useful. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Guys, suggestion, topic for next week. Well, better still, does anybody want to present something? You know, we, we've done a lot of these things with with me me presenting or Tito presenting. Um, you think we, should, we can do a session which is maybe more with some of the implementers talking about real problems or issues that they have? Now they've all gone quiet and when I suggest they do something. <laughs> I don't know. Did we, we 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 can we can we can reach out during the week. Okay, okay, no problem. So yeah. Thanks. I'm going to go. Now I'm definitely going to go. Yeah. All right. Thanks again. See you. See you guys.